Right, hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and welcome to another Redman Roundup. Now what the heck is going on at Manchester United? Manchester City have just won the Champions League and Liverpool have got nothing going on at the moment. So this is a, a Manchester-based video. Ugh. But pretty much the reason why we talk about it is because I am a guy who talks about the prevalent news that's going on right now. Let me get you up to date. Manchester City win their first ever Champions League. Although you can question how that team assembled, the team that has been assembled is got to be questioned or in the conversation as one of the best teams of all time. And in terms of the manager, he's got to be in the conversation for one of, if not the best manager of all time. Again, you can question how the squad's been assembled you can question all the, but the squad and the manager it speaks for itself based on the records that it's achieved so based on what we know I, we can speculate but based on what we know world class team now let's bring it to Manchester United James why are you talking about Manchester United I relate it because I woke up this morning I had a lazy morning. I slept until about half eleven because it was just one of those late nights where, you know, when you play FIFA a little bit too long, it was one of those things. I wake up and I see Brandon Williams trending. Now, for some reason, there's just certain people that I see trending and I think, you can't be trending unless there's something going on with you. Like, like Brandon Williams doesn't trend even if he plays well. Let's be honest. It's just one of those things. And there's been no Manchester United game, so I'm thinking, unless he's leaving they shouldn't really be much care if he leaves because he hasn't played regularly for United for years. So I clicked on it and, and the first thing that I see is a screenshot of, of, of what is supposedly his words in a story on Instagram. And it's it's a long... I'll put them on the screen one after another. I can't remember word for word, but I, the, 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 the thing that I'm getting from it is that he's calling out Rio Ferdinand for support... Well, not support and City, but basically giving City credit. And now, I haven't saw any clips of Rio Ferdinand celebrating with City players. I've read tweets that it's happened. I haven't saw it. I haven't saw anything too ridiculous to suggest that Rio Ferdinand is becoming a sky blue, mate. You know what I mean? I just saw that he was a pundit at the, at the game. And I know that a pundit has to be as balanced as possible. And to be a credible pundit, it's probably good that you do that as often as you possibly can. Rio Ferdinand also has his own channel. So the second that he's told or asked to work on a Champions League final and he speaks on a team and praises the team that won, and rightly so, Manchester United fans seem to have really got on his back. Now, if, if you send me a video of Rio Ferdinand doing this all in the dressing room with the City players going away, I get that, but I haven't saw that and I haven't saw anything too significant besides him basically, like, not wanting to give praise, but giving praise because it's the respectful thing to do in the presence of the people who've just won the Champions League. And because it's speculative and because there's so many things that has to be questioned, so many coincidences that don't add up, you can question the legitimacy of how they've assembled that that, that club together. But, but then you've got to separate the conversation for what we know, which is that 11 players has been the best team in the world this year. That 11 players and manager have been elite over the past couple of seasons. And based on that, I don't understand why it's bad to give them praise. But if you do think that Rio Ferdinand took it a bit out of line, let me know what he'd done. Because I'd never... Again, unless he was celebrating with the City players and... I don't, I don't understand what's bad about saying, what you know, well done for winning this trophy. Um, especially if you're being asked to work on the game. And I only wanted to bring it up because it's a big topic and there's something that I could be missing. So please, if you're a United fan, please inform me. Say, James, you've missed a lot here. Like, done this, this, that, and the other. And, you know, I really do want to actually analyse this situation. Now, let's talk about Brandon Williams. I woke up and, and when I saw the news, I had to do a tweet and I said, is Brandon Williams trying to expose the matrix of football? Because... He sounded like I put the, I, I, if I remembered at least, I put the screenshots on the screen before. You could have paused them if you wanted to see, or you can go back if you want to. <clears throat> it was so interesting to see that it, he was like sort of, it was like he was calling out, so, you know, he was sort of implying that City were cheaters as well, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, but something along those lines. And I'm interested, and then he started mentioning a podcast. Now, that was most interesting to me when he mentioned, I, should I do a podcast? And he was putting polls on his story. So, pretty, there's a couple of things I've taken from that. One, he must not be, he, he must have been told he's never playing for Manchester United ever again. He must have been told you're either going out on loan while you're on this big contract at United, because, yeah, you're not a part of the plans. 
because he should not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise him from a PR standpoint to be putting stuff like that up on his story when you're playing for Manchester United. So he mustn't be playing to not give a fuck. That's that's the first thing I established. Second thing, he, he wants to go on a podcast. How often do you get a young footballer wanting to go on a podcast? But the hell, I'm friends with some of these academy players. Do you know how hard it is to get them on the YouTube channel? Fr- friggin' difficult. Point I'm leading to, the fact he's going out saying I will jump on a podcast and literally three stories before he's referencing Rio Ferdinand and, you know, like the, the hunger of the club or, or whatever it was that the screenshot said. The fact he wants to go on a podcast to discuss this. First, the, the questions I raise is what do you want to expose or what's the points that you want to raise? What's the goal of raising these points, what do you want to change? Do you want to do you want to expose City cheating, or do you want to expose um, the levels at Manchester United dropping, or the standards at Manchester United dropping? Because I'm seeing two sides where there's a big audience on Twitter that are backing Brandon Williams, and then there's a big audience who are also saying, "Why is this kid chatting about Rio Ferdinand?" I'm on the latter team for now because I don't understand what Brandon Williams means, and unless he goes on a podcast and talks about all this, this is going to be one big possibly dark cloud on his career going forward because everyone will raise the question including me a Liverpool fan what did Brandon Williams mean and if we don't know what Brandon Williams meant then that is led to speculation and if it leads to speculation then people can think of the worst case scenario about you and that's why if I was the PR team now you can't change what is done he's put the stories out there what you can do is respond to this in the best possible way you can sit there and say you were drunk, you slept in and you never took the stories down. You can sit there and say, oh, I was drunk, emotions were high, I was just upset because Man City had won the Champions League and I'm a, I'm a Man United fan through and through. You can say that. Now, I don't think that's the best approach. I do believe either responding and expanding on what you meant would be the best option or going back on it and saying one of those things. And I hope he goes with the first because for him to not take the story down... And I know what I said was bullshit, let's be honest. He's definitely been awake today to see the response of what's gone down. He was putting fucking polls on his story. Now, I'm not saying he weren't slightly intoxicated throughout this process. And yes, he is only 22 years of age. And as a 21-year-old tw- turning 22, the mind can still be crazy. But I don't know what the goal is here. If he's looking to expose something, that's great. If he's looking to, 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 to mention the standards of Manchester United dropping, I can't think of something more powerful than a player coming out saying the club's fucked. You know what I mean? But Ronaldo's already done that, so what's the difference if Ronaldo does it and then now Brandon Williams does it? What's the goal? What's the achievement? What's the purpose? And if he's just causing an unnecessary disruption between a current Man United player and a Man United legend, is that really good for the football club? And that's what I'm assessing with the Man United fans who tune into this video. I'm not just United fans. I'm only asking them because they've got the proper insight. I'm just talk- I'm talking to all fans. What is this situation? So to break it down just one last time, I go on Twitter, Brandon Williams is calling out Rio and he, he's calling out like City and, uh, and he, he's implying something about the standards is what I've received from those screenshots. Maybe I've got the wrong message and you can correct me. He's called out Rio Ferdinand specifically because I don't know why he looks like he's being too, you know, closey, nicey, nicey with the City players. And then obviously United fans agree with that sentiment. So you've got a group of United fans who think that the standards have been dropped and then you've got a group of United fans that are saying, why is this kid speaking to him? This is crazy, this is interesting, and it's why I wanted to do a video about it, to be honest. Um, I also wanted to extend on, on the Manchester City talk, because uh, if you if you were a City fan, you would have not liked my live stream last night. But just know I try and be as fair and balan- balanced as honestly possible. And again, I think you can separate the two conversations about the allegations that are up against you and what you've achieved with what we know. And what we know is that what you've achieved is on paper. The 11 players, honestly, one of the best 11s. In my opinion, the best 11 I've ever seen over the course of three or four years. And then, of course, to, to, to lose the spine of Aguero company, um, you know, Yaya Torre, all these players, and then replace it with Rodger and De Bruyne. And absolutely fantastic. Genuinely, g- genuinely admirable. And you know what? If I can ever have a conversation with a City fan and he can lay down the legit evidence that... If he can tell me why Manchester City generated more revenue than Real Madrid, if he can explain to me in depth... Um, why the UEFA case got dropped as soon as it? If he can explain to me in depth about the, these Premier League allegations to why City have to be innocent, have to be, that is when I'll sit there and say, okay, I will no longer mention these allegations to the football club. I won't, and I, and I will take every word that I said back. You've done it the right way. You've done this. You've done that. In fact, you've done it the best way. You've done it so good. You thought we all thought you were cheating. That's how good you've done it. I will sit there and I will take my licks. 
But until that moment, and it's the same with FSG, so I'm FSG out. Until an FSG in it sits there and lays the points out on a table saying this is why FSG are actually more beneficial than you think, I will remain in my stance. So I'm saying I'm open to discussion. If any City fans want to discuss about that and you know more than me, please do let me know. Because I really actually want to give this amazing team the credit. I think Ilkay Gundogan's been the best midfielder in the league this season. I think Kevin De Bruyne has been the most influential um a creator in the league this season. Haaland has been the most ruthless finisher in the league this season. Rodri has been by far and clear the best DM in the league this season. John Stones may just be the best ball-playing centre-back I've ever seen in the Premier League, if not up there. And if you name one who's better, like Virgil, for instance, I never saw Virgil dribbling like that. I saw the passes, I get that. But from a dribbling standpoint, going forward, he made, he made what Matip done look even better. Like, that's how good John Stones is. Ruben Diaz, leader from the back. Edison, I don't think he's as good as people make out, but what a performance. It really is one of the best teams that I've ever saw. It really, really is. And for that reason, I want to sit there and give it the credit that I just did. And I will give it the credit that I just did in a separate conversation. But if you see me in a stream last night talking about your allegations, that's a whole different topic. So I do respect Pep and the players, but I do still question the assembles of those players. You'll get the point that I'm saying. I'm just going round with circles now, aren't I, chat? Let me know about the Brandon Williams, Rio Ferdinand thing. If you have any more information, I'd love to know. Also, on top of this, let me know your thoughts about the Champions League final. Ah, City cheating scumbags. And ah, Liverpool going to come back next season. Anyway, guys, there's going to be a live stream tonight. I just wanted to get a video out there. There was very minimal news, so thought we'd just talk about a little bit of footy stuff. And yeah, much love to you and your mothers. I will see you all. Later. Before we go, smash a like and don't be stingy. <laughs> See you in a bit.